Today's video is sponsored by MyHeritage. Beneath the bustling streets of Los Angeles and the deserts of Southern California lies a fault line so dangerous it could change the course of American history in under two minutes. The Southern San Andreas Fault hasn't ruptured in over 300 years, an eerily long silence for a segment of Earth's crust that is supposed to rupture every 150 to 200 years. Scientists warn that this fault is now locked, loaded, and ready to snap with unimaginable force. What happens when a system holding back centuries of tectonic tension finally gives way? Seismologists say the big one isn't a myth or an exaggeration. It's an inevitability. A magnitude 7.8 or greater quake on the southern San Andreas Fault could bring modern civilization to its knees. Collapsing buildings, rupturing pipelines, crippling freeways, and igniting uncontrollable fires. Millions of lives could be upended in moments. Today, let's delve into the ticking geological time bomb beneath Southern California, exploring its history, its terrifying potential, and the narrow window of opportunity we have left to prepare. Before we start, we want to tell you about today's sponsor. Have you ever wondered who your ancestors were? Thanks to MyHeritage, there's a way to explore that now. MyHeritage is an online platform that helps you map out your family tree, trace generations across continents, and uncover forgotten connections buried in time. With over 36 billion historical records, it's a powerful tool for anyone curious about their roots and how they have shaped the present. To create my family tree, I added the details of my parents and grandparents and uploaded their photos. As the tree grew, I zoomed out and began to see generations come together. What really stood out was the Instant Discoveries feature, which shows all the information my heritage has discovered for your family tree. One click, and suddenly, entire branches appeared. Names, records, and photos. I found a grandfather from seven generations ago, born in 1630, who served as a minister to King Rajasinha II of Sri Lanka, and later rebelled against him. That was a surprising discovery. I also came across a family photograph from around 1931, showing both my great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather, an image I had never seen before. When I shared these findings with my grandmother, it sparked a conversation we'd never had before. She was amazed that I had managed to trace our family's story so far back. I was also able to repair and enhance an old photo of my grandparents, which was super cool. Curious about your own origins? My Heritage makes it easier for you to find out. Try it with a free 14-day trial. Click the link in the description to begin building your family tree today. The San Andreas Fault stretches roughly 1,200 kilometers through California, from the Salton Sea in the south to Cape Mendocino in the north. It is a transform fault, meaning it's a strike-slip boundary where the Pacific Plate slides northwestward past the North American Plate. This type of boundary is notorious for producing large, shallow, and highly destructive earthquakes. The fault is divided into three main segments, the northern, central, and southern sections. While the northern segment ruptured famously during the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, and the central section experiences frequent smaller creeping events that release pressure gradually, the southern San Andreas has remained unnervingly still. This southern portion runs through heavily populated areas, including Palm Springs, San Bernardino, and Los Angeles' eastern suburbs, regions home to millions. Unlike the creeping middle segment, the southern section is locked, meaning it is not sliding at all. The pressure is building with no release. When that pressure is finally unleashed, the energy released could be equivalent to more than 1,000 times the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The Southern San Andreas Fault has not experienced a major rupture since 1690, based on paleoseismic evidence found in the sediments of ancient lake beds and desert basins. That means it's been over three centuries since it last broke. A troubling fact, given that scientists estimate the average recurrence interval for major earthquakes in this section, is between 150 to 200 years. Every year that passes without a rupture adds more strain to the system. According to studies conducted by the U.S. Geological Survey and the Southern California Earthquake Center, this fault segment is currently storing enough elastic energy to produce an earthquake of magnitude 7.8 or greater. 
This is precisely what alarms seismologists. In their words, the southern San Andreas is not just capable of generating a major quake, it is primed for one. Furthermore, the fault has been exhibiting signs of strain accumulation. GPS sensors have detected measurable deformation across Southern California, indicating the plates continue to grind against each other underground. While these shifts may seem minuscule, often only a few millimeters a year, they are harbingers of the inevitable. While the surface remains calm, the earth beneath Southern California is anything but calm. The Pacific Plate is moving northwestward at about 50 millimeters per year relative to the North American Plate. Over the last 300 years, this has amounted to about 15 meters of accumulated slip, an immense amount of strain that has yet to be released. One particularly unsettling fact is that faults like San Andreas do not give ample warning before breaking. Unlike volcanic eruptions, which often come with precursor signs such as gas emissions or tremors, major earthquakes can occur suddenly. The locking of the southern San Andreas means there are no slow slips or foreshocks to vent the tension. When the fault goes, it will likely go all at once. What makes this even more dangerous is that many Southern California residents, especially younger generations, have never experienced a major earthquake. The Northridge quake in 1994 was devastating, but it was only a magnitude 6.7 and on a blind thrust fault, not the San Andreas. The sense of urgency has faded for many, making the region psychologically and practically underprepared. When seismologists speak of the big one, they are generally referring to a magnitude 7.8 to 8.2 earthquake originating along the southern San Andreas Fault. In 2008, the USGS and other agencies ran a simulation called the ShakeOut Scenario, designed to estimate the impacts of such an event. The results were sobering. In this modeled event, a magnitude 7.8 quake ruptures a 300-kilometer stretch of the southern San Andreas, from the Salton Sea to the San Gabriel Mountains. Within seconds, shock waves radiate outward, violently shaking cities like Palm Springs, Riverside, San Bernardino, and parts of Los Angeles. The strongest shaking lasts up to two minutes, with aftershocks continuing for months. Buildings not built to modern seismic codes collapse. Old water and gas pipelines rupture, causing fires that emergency crews struggle to reach due to blocked roads. Power grids fail. Water supplies are disrupted for weeks. The economic losses are estimated at over $200 billion, with tens of thousands injured and several thousand potentially killed. In Los Angeles alone, the shaking would be severe enough to damage high-rises, freeways, and even major landmarks. But the damage wouldn't stop there. Ground rupture, liquefaction, and landslides could compound the devastation, especially in areas with loose soils and steep terrain. One of the most concerning aspects of the looming rupture is how ill-equipped Southern California's urban environment is for an earthquake of this scale. While seismic retrofitting has improved in recent decades, tens of thousands of older buildings remain vulnerable. Critical infrastructure is also at risk. Freeways, bridges, aqueducts, and pipelines cross the San Andreas Fault in numerous locations. The California Aqueduct, for instance, brings water from the north to the arid south and crosses the fault multiple times. If severed, Los Angeles could lose access to a significant portion of its water supply for months. Meanwhile, airports like LAX may experience runway damage, grounding flights when they're needed most. In a region known for its car culture, the paralysis of the road network would be devastating. A rupture of the southern San Andreas Fault wouldn't just affect Los Angeles or Palm Springs. It could have cascading effects across the state and beyond. Major transportation routes like I-10 and I-15 could be severed, cutting off commerce and supply chains between California and neighboring states. Ports like Long Beach and Los Angeles, vital to the national economy, could be crippled. Moreover, if the rupture triggers nearby faults, the shaking could extend far beyond the immediate area. There are fears that a southern San Andreas quake could potentially set off activity on the Garlock Fault or even the San Jacinto Fault, escalating the disaster into a broader seismic crisis. 
And while California is the epicenter of the risk, the national implications are just as severe. California's economy ranks among the world's largest. A prolonged disruption in its productivity, especially in tech, entertainment, and trade, would ripple through global markets. Recognizing the inevitability of a large quake, California has made strides in earthquake preparedness. The ShakeAlert early warning system, now operational, can send alerts to phones seconds before the shaking begins. While seconds may not seem like much, they can be the difference between life and death, allowing trains to stop, surgeries to pause, and people to take cover. Building codes have been revised, and retrofitting programs are ongoing. Public education campaigns like Drop, Cover, and Hold On are promoted in schools and workplaces. Yet these efforts face challenges, underfunding, public apathy, and the sheer scale of the urban population. Many residents still lack emergency kits, evacuation plans, or basic knowledge of what to do during a quake. Cell phone alerts and sirens may be helpful, but if people don't know how to react, the damage is compounded. Time is running out to close the gap between scientific warnings and public action. It's easy to view the threat of the big one with fatalism. After all, earthquakes cannot be prevented. But that does not mean their impact must be catastrophic. Preparedness, both structural and societal, is the only defense we have against the forces beneath us. Cities can retrofit vulnerable buildings. Utilities can reinforce lifelines like water mains and power grids. Individuals can stock emergency supplies and learn how to respond. Governments can fund research, enforce regulations, and launch drills. The science is clear. Now the question is whether society will listen in time. The locked southern San Andreas Fault is a geological certainty. Its rupture is coming. It may be in 10 years or tomorrow. The countdown has already begun, and every day without action is a day of borrowed time. Don't forget, there's a free 14-day trial on MyHeritage waiting for you. Click the link in the description to begin uncovering your own family history.